Hi, I'm Mark, a do-it-yourself boater that seems to have more boat than I have time. This is Terry. She's my partner. A little goofy, but a great first mate. Together, we like to hang around our boat, entertain friends, visit beaches, go anywhere there's sunshine and a beach. We'll be there. We love for walking little towns or making new adventures and recording them to share with our family and friends. All of that means we also have lots of boat projects. This is a do-it-yourself channel. In between socializing and inviting friends out, we do have to do boat work. Come join us. Maybe you can see how we do it. It may not be the right way, but it's the way we do it, and we have a lot of fun. So come join us for an adventure. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we have a special project. Um, it's a capacitor off of our generator. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we were out, uh, spending the night out. It's time to do dinner. Of course the captain forgot to bring a propane tank so we couldn't grill anything. So I thought, well that's no issue. I'll just fire the generator up. We'll cook inside. It's not ideal, but yeah, it'll work. Uh, so we fired the generator up. Uh, we've been out on the lake all day. The ACs came on. Uh, of course, probably the water heater came on. I'm sure that switch was turned on. Um, the battery charger was running. Uh, and then Terry fired up the stove. So pretty heavy load on the generator, but typically they're designed to run uh, the kind of stuff that's on these boats. Uh, but granted, heavy load. It ran for a while and just boom, popped off. The uh, stop, stop charging. Uh, and of course the engine sputtered uh, for a few seconds and then it just shut down itself. We tried to reset breakers and it wasn't anything like that. Uh, so we gave up, we wound up having to come back to the port that night and and try to halfway, you know, restart dinner halfway through cooking it, which was a disaster all in itself. But anyway, tore down the generator uh, and found this capacitor in exactly this condition. I don't know if you can tell top was blown off of it uh, one of the contacts was ripped off on the inside uh, and this runs the generator unit itself not on the motor but on the the uh, generator uh, I wish I could explain exactly what it does but it's an important part this one I've actually replaced before uh, this is a cheap I, I believe a Chinese unit I don't know if it gas built up it got hot or whatever and and it popped off like this or if it was it was tie strapped in zip tied in uh, if vibration from the engine pulled against the wiring harness and popped it off don't know um, but anyway this is bad I'm pretty sure this is a problem uh, I got a new replacement this one is from Romania so hmm. Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers that that's a little better. Uh, I got this. I didn't get this from uh, Westerbeek like that one. That one's from Westerbeek. It was about a little over 100 bucks. This one I got off Marine Parts Supply, I think. Uh, it was an online marine store. Uh, a, a little more than half price, uh, but just generally looks like better quality. It's bigger. It's heavier. Uh, the casing looks, looks stronger. Uh, so that's all good news. I don't know that it matters, but I am going to put some zip ties to hold this top on in case it was, you know, the wiring harness was pulling against this. I'm going to zip tie it, you know, just around like this and then run a piece of tape to hold that in place. It won't hurt it. I know that. It might help, might not, but I'm going to try it. Uh, and then go reinstall it. And uh, I will show you how I do that. Um, the engine bay in these 380s is pretty spacious, uh, but I'm pretty spacious too, uh, so I don't always fit very well. Uh, but I have figured out some techniques on how to get in there and um, create some space so I can get all the way. The uh, generators on the 
on the starboard side, you know, between the uh, the outer wall and the starboard engine. Uh, so it is a little tight getting over there and getting down to this because it's down inside uh, the generator. But I'll show you all that when I get down in there. I waited until the hottest day of the year. That was my plan. It's a little, you know, it's a mid 90s today, hot, humid, uh, good, you know, a little good Georgia weather. <laughs> uh, so I waited till about the hottest day of the year to climb down in the engine bay. Uh, I've let it, I've let it heat up all day long just to make it as absolutely miserable as it possibly can be. Uh, so you will see me sweating and maybe even cussing a little bit. I'll try to bleep all that out. But anyway, let's get started. So I took the capacitor. And I, did, I wanted to just show you what I was doing. I explained it. So I took a zip tie. Remember the old capacitor, this, the, the top came off. And if you, if you look down in there, you can see the, the lead right here ripped away from the actual capacitor inside. Again, I don't know what caused that. Uh, it could have been pressure build up on the inside, pushed it out. Uh, when I took it out, the wiring harness was pulling pretty hard on it. And this was zip tied into a bracket and the vibration of the generator when it's running maybe was pulling the capacitor this way the zip tie was or the wiring harness was holding it and maybe heat you know had melted the glue around it or something and this pulled out and then it was easy to pull the con don't know i'm guessing there but what i did the new capacitor which i know it won't hurt it i just simply put a zip tie around it on the base you can see and it goes across the top so it will kind of add a little bit of support to this top so it won't come out i put a piece of uh, duct tape around it to hold the zip tie in place so it doesn't slide off left or right and that's a you know that's an extra little safety feature again i don't know if it's going to help or not it certainly isn't hurting the uh the capacitor itself i can still put my contacts on and connect it to the wiring harness and i'm still going to zip tie it in down there but just a little a little technique i'm gonna i'm gonna try and see if that helps all right now into the uh engine bay and let the sweating begin so this is the 380 engine bay and this is my starboard engine there's my generator that's where i'm doing the work today so you can see what i've done i'll show you over here on the starboard or on the port engine this is the exhaust uh, some of the exhaust manifolds that go out and they go into this collection tub right here don't know exactly what it does but it, i mean i know what it does it distributes the exhaust in the water most of it goes through the bottom of the boat some of it goes out this tube to the side so you can tell when you're getting water and what i do when i need room is i just take these off it takes about sorry we got people up here at the dock but take this stuff off and it, I get it out of the way and if you come over here to the starboard engine I've already done that you see here is the that baffle that I take out there's a drain plug right here on the back it's full of water so what you want to do is you drain the water out of it there's four you know just wood screws that connect it to this base down here have a cushion here for now but see it sits on that base and I've disconnected my exhaust manifolds out here here and these are all the tubes I've cut loose and moved them out of the way and now I have a perfect spot to sit down here behind the engine so now I have perfect access to the back side of the engine I can do the impeller right down here get to a really easy water pump all the belts hoses my uh, uh, heat exchanger is right here and of course there's the generator that's the the bad guy today and uh, so we're working on that and as you can see I have really good access to it um, I get right up here to it uh, and that's where I'm putting this new capacitor so as I start putting it back together, I will show you how that goes and we'll test this sucker out. So more to come. So I am down here in the engine bay and you can see I've, I've zip tied this the capacitor in here. That's where it goes. You know, capacitor is pretty straightforward. 
It's got two posts on it. There's two wires. I took a picture of it before I took the old one out. So I didn't video me snapping those back in, but that's pretty basic. You take the old one out, put this one in, you match the wiring up, and it goes in there. This is a little cover that I'm going to have to put back. You know, it goes back on here like that. And I won't, and it just kind of snaps down. It screws through here. I have some little plates. I'll screw that on. Then this control panel, I will come up. I will screw it on. There's a screw here and uh, and one down here. They are a little tricky, but not too hard. And then of course this has has a cover plate uh, that I think I have up up top. This this has a cover plate, I'm gonna, you know. And uh, I'll put it. Okay, I just want to show you what it looks like when I get that cover back on. So this cover just wraps around. You kind of slide it in a little slot on the back side. It's kind of a couple little catches right here that are hard to get in, but they settle down and then. It comes down, there's some screw holes here, and then this plate, you just screw through everything, and it screws this plate, and now, this control box, of course I have all the batteries and everything turned off, will screw in right here, so I will do that next, and we'll get it in place, and then I'll put the cover on it, and we'll be ready to fire this sucker up, and either I'm going to look like a fool, because I put the wrong part on and it don't work, or it's going to work. Although I know that part was bad, so it need replacing at any point. Okay, I'm making progress. And I realize there's no way for me to possibly show you where these screws are with any kind of accuracy. So I'm showing you with my screwdriver because it's, it's probably the worst part because it's almost blind. You got to find these screws. There's a screw at the bottom. My screwdriver's in it now, and it goes through this control panel base, and it screws into the main unit here. And so I'm tightening it up right now. So you can see, I just about got, yeah, it's tight. And there's one up here. And I have to kind of find it by feel. Uh, that's why you don't want power coming to this thing. But it is, there it is. And so I'm gonna tighten it up. And now it's tight and so this control panel is now back on and uh, I will install this and it's there's a little trick to it too uh, so give me one second let me see if I can grab it so here's the uh, control panel good thing is it, if, if you can read schematics they're on the back if you can read them they're they're there but if you see there's some little holes at the bottom of this and there's some little studs there in there and so what you do to put this back in is make sure all the wires are in there slide the uh, panel over those studs and come up and it should come up and then it fits over there and then you simply have these these little set screws that you put in there and on here get a close up my little my fat fingers on here and so there you go so you can see once you get access to the generator um, but you know, I spend 10 or 15 minutes and I take all this Normally that big pipe is right here. It comes to here where I'm sitting is uh, this big guy And then of course there's the other pipe right here. It would be right here So there's virtually no way to get to this. There is a panel right here on the 380s that you can come up and you can lay on your stomach But my arms don't reach all the way down to here so that's good if you got to pull this thing out uh, but to do maintenance you really need to get back in here like this so that's why I take everything out like I do but look that was uh, I spent probably a total of 10-15 minutes getting it put back together uh, so I am going to go fire this puppy up
uh, and I will let you know how it goes. Back in. Um, just what I do, since I do take all these exhausts off, do a quick run check just to make sure there's no leaks. So Terry is going to, she's turning all the switches on. I'm gonna fire up. Oh, I gotta put this back on. One more. One more hose. There we go. So, she is uh, turning all the switches on, and we'll just do a quick, quick uh, check to make sure there's no leaks. Okay? Um, I don't have to do anything with throttles or anything. No, they should all be down. You should be in neutral to start the starboard engine. Starboard engine, ignition, start, and stop, correct? Yeah. Starboard. Yeah. Okay, start her up. Go back up the water, but I can feel water pumping through here already. No leak. No leak. Water is coming out from here. I can feel that. I'm going to zip my back over the rail actually. Um, no leak there. No leak there. No leak. We're in good shape. I don't see any leaks. Just need to uh, zip tie this to so kind of keep the uh, thing out. So, other than that, we're all good. See you guys later. Hey guys, uh, back at the house. Uh, had a great weekend. Uh, was looking over some of these videos and putting together uh, this video and realized that the GoPro had been switched to photo mode when I was trying to show proof that the generator is running. So I'm here right now uh, in my office uh, editing and needed to add this uh, prologue, I guess is what you would call it, uh, that the generator repair did in fact work. Uh, that was the issue. It was that capacitor uh, tested under pretty heavy load. It did fine. Didn't run it much this weekend. Uh, so I don't know, you know, um, I can't guarantee how long it's going to last, unfortunately, but so far so good. Um, we're about get, we're getting ready. I'm packing up today. We're going to head to Florida. Uh, we're going to be down there. We have another, another boat, you know, when, uh, when I say I have too much boat, I don't know what to do with that. The problem is we have three boats. So we're going to go down to Florida. Uh, we're going to, uh, get that boat, use it. We haven't used it since around December. Uh, and I hate boats sitting around. They tend to break when, when they're just sitting. Uh, so we're going to go and run a little bit, uh, maybe head out to Dog Island, do a little fishing. Uh, but just spend a, a nice long weekend down there and uh, check things out. We'll try to get some video so you see that. Uh, if you like this content, uh, you know, follow us. Give us a thumbs up. That helps. Uh, if you have any comments, we'd sure love to hear them. Thanks, guys. See you next time.